Hey everybody, Barry here again. So this is the most recent upload after the burnout competition. The last few videos have been videos before the burnout. I'm just working my way into them and stuff. Um, took a week off and I'm getting back at it. So we know that at the burnout competition, uh, the turbo was cooked, which was cooked the night before, but I just didn't know it because I spent like 16 hours building an engine. I didn't have time to go checking turbos and stuff. So this thing is cooked. You can take the turbine wheel and kind of wiggle it around like a lot. So that's busted. So this thing is coming off. And look what, like a couple days out in the rain did. This is terrible. Welcome to Newfoundland here, buddy. Everything just completely rust. That was like black. Crazy. So sad to say that the turbo is coming off. I was going to run the turbo with exhaust, you know, under the hood. Out through the back, everything was going to look cool. It's going to be sleeperish, but turbo's cooked. I don't have another one to put on it. I do have this massive thing over here, but I want to keep that for an actual go fast project, like a street slash drag vehicle, something like that. So this one, uh, obviously the five three is not coming out because I love it. But I think what I'm going to do is do a mild five three, maybe put a better set of heads on it later on. I'm saving up for a cam kit. So, you know, if the YouTube thing works out enough over the next year, I can save up by a cam kit, something like that. Uh, maybe a set of push rods, rockers, something like that. And I'm gonna pull off the two-step. I'm gonna pull off the line lock, which is down there. I'm not sure if there's an issue with the line lock, but the brakes kept pushing through it. Um, like, maybe there wasn't enough vacuum, something like that, but as soon as I, like, get it up and want to spin, it just pushed right through the line lock. Never had that issue before, so I don't know if the line lock is messed up or something. Plus, when I parked the van outside, I didn't realize that the line lock was on, and it's hooked up direct to the battery with a fuse, so the ignition doesn't need to be on, and it completely drained the battery. And line locks are only supposed to be on for like 30 seconds or something max, so I don't know if I cooked it after or not. So I'm going to take off a bunch of this stuff. Obviously, the intercooler is going to go. I'll use that on something else. Turbo is going to go. And I think what I'm going to do is just run duels out the back, put a couple of nice mufflers on it, maybe an MWA, uh, one of those Gibson mufflers with attitude or something like that. Something that's going to sound really, really cool. And those two tips that Thailand sent me are going to go on this. And I think they're going to come out like, say, right here. Both of them come out like NASCAR boom tube style or something like that. Uh, also, I broke the pan hard rod. You can see that the tire is out like a lot. And a couple of people did mention that it looked kind of sketchy. And I was like, well, you know, it was not bad. It looked it looked fine. I had it double welded, like every weld. I had welded it twice and stuff. But when I did the burnout or the donut, I went around and got into the gravel. When I came back up on the track, there's about a six inch gap, I'll say, where the track is like six inches higher than the dirt. And as soon as I hit that sideways, it broke the pan hard rod off. So it's not really a big deal because it's ladder bars anyway. And it aligned it enough that I could dolly at home with no issues. So, yeah, today I'm going to go ahead and take off the turbo, get all the big stuff out of the way. And I got to see if I can get a bumper for this thing because when I loaded up on the dollies, of course, being the idiot that I am, I missed one ramp completely and drove the bumper directly into the dolly and split it into. <laughs> so, yeah, I think this is going to be kind of like a scrap down video. And basically, this wasn't really in the plan. Like, I had not planned to take the turbo off. It kind of upsets me that this turbo is messed up because although it's only a 6 to 6 millimeter turbo, it has a T6 hot side, so it didn't make much heat. It made lots of boost. It made like 30 pounds when it spiked on me when the wastegate stuck shut one day. But I've had this turbo on, this is a sixth engine now, all LSs, and the turbo blew them all up. <laughs> so... Uh, we've, we've got a lot of history together. Plus, it's an old Mack turbo. It's got the Mack with the Bulldog on it. It's, it's sick, but it'll make a really cool wall hanger anyway. Um, and I don't have one to put back on it, so I'm going to go NA. I've got 317 heads on it, which kind of makes me upset because I put those on with the intention of running boost. Because a 5.3 with dished pistons and 317 heads is a dog. Like, uh, I think it's like 9 to 1 or less. So, you know, it's not going to be the biggest, most powerful machine for right now, but it's what I have. And after I get the turbo off, I'll be able to see what kind of condition the engine is actually in. So I'll run probably just manifolds, dual exhaust, all will be well. 
and it's still gonna be a sleeper. It's still a big old V8 rear wheel drive with a standard in it. So, you know, it's not gonna be a V6 automatic pile anymore anyway. So let's get this thing taken off. Alrighty, got the turbo taken off, intercooler taken off, open throttle body, open exhaust. I really want to see what it sounds like. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Huh, I got no battery. Why? Hmm. Don't be contrary now. Nothing. Hmm. Oh yeah, the battery's dead. I forgot that I had line lock left on. I'm gonna go put it on charge and I'll be back in a half an hour. Okay, I may have panicked for like no reason. There we go. I had it on a battery charger for like two hours now. And it actually dings when I open the door, so. Hmm, see what it sounds like. like a foot and a half exhaust off the back of the turbo so I expect it to be like wicked loud still doesn't stay running but whatever but man that's loud and it sounds fine there's no noise or anything in it mm. that actually sounds kind of cool I'm wondering if the knocking was coming from the turbo because it was rattling like wicked and the engine sounded awful, but it sounds fine there now. Or, I guess option number two, I should turn the fan on. I guess scenario number two could be with the bearings gone in the turbo, I guess it could have been robbing a lot of oil pressure because that's a lot better. Now it's windy out here. Not as awful. Because when I would accelerate or let off the gas, there'd be a big plume of smoke come out. So I'd imagine that was from the turbo um, oil getting into the intake side, burned it off or throwing it out the exhaust or something. So it must have robbed some oil pressure and potentially making the engine kind of knock like that. But it sounds wicked. The engine sounds absolutely fine. jumped ahead a little tiny bit but there was something that was really getting on my nerves and that was it just wasn't running right at all it wouldn't idle like when i started up i just hit the button it would start it would immediately shut off start shut off so i went ahead and said hey i wonder if there's an issue with my engine intake gasket's gone something and i said well i know how to change that change the operating system plug my old mass air back in stuck the iat sensor down in the filter and put a one bar map sensor on it with some sketchy connectors. And, okay, you know before that I couldn't get it running without touching the gas. That's it. for 
it to idle up before it just goes boom. So what's the issue? It's the same tune they had in the Cadillac, different size injectors, different size engine, whatever, but the tune itself is essentially the same. And I had the fueling perfect, 14.6, 14.7, 14.8. It would kind of dance around a little bit. But other than that, the tune was fine. I even moved up the base running airflow like a lot just to see if the initial stab of the engine starting was too much or not enough, whatever. And absolutely nothing, no difference whatsoever. So, YouTube, what, what's going on? Was it my three bar map sensor was giving me issues? Because this is just a stock one bar. Here's your regular old mass air. I don't know, but it runs. There's no turbo on it right now, so I really don't need to go speed density anyway. I just like it. It runs really well when it runs really well. And I guess so does mass air, you know, whatever. And I don't like the big, chunky, ugly mass airflow sensor on there either, but whatever. So I think I might just do some sort of a cold air intake thing. Like I got a lots of piping, and some ugly boots. So obviously the exhaust isn't going to be here anymore. It's going to go down and out the back with duals, cool chrome tips. So this won't be here. So I can do a cold air intake going over here somewhere. And when I put in the wheel well covers again, because I still have those, they're right here. Then I can put the filter like way down here in the wheel well, and it'll get nice cold air. There'll be no water, no dirt. And I think it'll look really, really cool. So that's the plan anyway for now. Um, so I guess this has been more of an update, taking the turbo off, looking at how awful condition it's in. And this is the awful condition. It's really messed up. Man, this has been a weird day. This has been a weird day in this van. Uh, just got in the van and I heard a fuel pump. It's like, this weird. The key is off. Turn the key on. Fuel pump shuts off. Turn the key off. Fuel pump starts up again. And I found that this relay is almost too hot to hold. And everything here looks kind of melty. That was hot. <sighs> this thing is weird. Why does everything have to be so difficult? I'm definitely no electrician and I'm no automotive electrician, but should relays be like way too hot to touch? Nope. New relay. Problem solved. I'm gonna go shut this off here before this van drives itself up to Tim Hortons and orders coffee. This is, uh, this is an odd day and I'm not into it. Um, so as for the next video, I'd say I'll get back at the rear suspension, make sure none of the ladder bars are bent, make sure, you know, the shock mounts aren't bent, springs are good, all that stuff, because the pan hard bar did break and I need to, I think I'm gonna weld it back together and beef it up really, really good. Um, I don't really have the material or well the tools right now to have a pipe bender and bend it all and stuff and make another one so I don't think I'll have any issues with um, basically weld the part back together that broke because it didn't tear or rust apart it just cracked like the weld cracked so I'll weld that back up put some sort of a gusset brace or something in there and make that nice and tough because obviously I just underbuilt it when I did I don't like doing that so I'm going to overbuild it this time That'll be next time, and I'll probably start making some exhaust for it, and yeah, lots of work left to do. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good day.